Saudi Arabia has actually been quite a hot topic this week, but I've also been tracking the Egyptian market quite closely this okay. week, and there have been a number of developments regarding the capital city project, the, the huge development they're trying to build on the east of Cairo. Um, a number of local contractors continue to be winning uh, more government work. I, I mean, have things actually, so we, we saw the, the flotation of the currency mm -hmm. uh, in, was it November, November last, last year? year. Um, big political decision because obviously that has a damaging effect on inf people's savings mm -hmm. or an inflationary effect, but it, it removed some of the uncertainty about currency valuation. Uh, has that made a change? Are we, are, are we now seeing the promised foreign investment flooding into Egypt uh, or is it still just government spending on state projects? I think it would be quite premature to say that the flotation, we've already seen the, the results of the flotation. It will take a much longer time for foreign investment to flow in the, yeah. at the rate that it used to before the, the 2011 uprising. But like you said, what it does is stabilize the currency situation. It assures foreign investors that the money that they're putting in is at this rate and they'll be able to uh, withdraw it at, at the same rate. Um, but there have been some developments and like I said with the capital city in particular, the first phase mm -hmm. of the capital city which the government had previously signed with the Chinese the Chinese have since dropped out of that project and a lot of local contractors, Hassan Alam being mm. uh, the main one, taking on a lot of work. So there's a huge ministerial district which is under construction with uh, a lot of projects underway. I wrote a story just uh, yesterday about Hassan Alam winning, I think it's their seventh government building in that ministerial district. So, you know, if you combine that with a lot of infrastructure work that's been going on, uh, utility and uh, power work over the last year you can say that the capital city is pressing ahead beyond this first phase in this government district it's difficult to see where the government will get the investments from i was in cairo last month and a lot of developers uh, private developers are easy are floating the idea of actually creating consortiums of developers contractors lawyers um, and consultants to actually you know propose to the government to develop parts of the capital city it's under kind of a PPP. PPP, exactly. Yeah, so it's sort of a private mm -hmm. um, development agency yeah. as a sub package exactly. of an overall scheme. Exactly. So that's okay. something that... And who, who, when you say you're hearing about that, is that just like idle chit chat or are there, I mean, are these proposals that are being taken to they know the, well, the, this the is, Like I said, this is, these are proposals that have been put on paper and been presented to the so government. Who, who would, so Egypt quite famously or at least it's very well known mm. they have a PPP unit yeah. and it's been in terms of you know the region is looking at PPP Egypt's been one of the mm -hmm. the, the, the leading um, players in terms of the, the, the institutions and regulations so these proposals do they go to the PPP unit? Well the PPP units in Egypt's in facing a difficult time at the moment so if you look back 2010 it won an award from the World mm -hmm. Bank for having such a comprehensive yeah. uh, framework in place and then now you know seven years on and since the 2015 Economic Development Conference, the, the, the head of the PPP unit has been it was resigned or has left or has yeah. been sacked, we don't know. Um, and just a couple of months ago, there were talks that the PPP unit would be transferred to the Ministry of Investment, away from the Ministry of Finance, where yeah. it previously uh, operated from. And again, uh, you know, away from, apart from the power and water sector, mm -hmm. Egypt's failed to press ahead with a lot of its promised PPP programs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one project that comes into mind is the Nile bus ferry, yeah. uh, which yeah. received bids from, but only from two developers. Mm -hmm. There's been issues about arbitration mm -hmm. clauses in contracts. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, historically Egypt's had, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a comprehensive PPP yeah. framework in place, but it's not been able to translate that into mm -hmm. actually delivering projects. And it's, yeah. it's, it's difficult at the moment for the people. Before we move on to, uh, sorry, yeah, Jenny. I think it's like a project by project basis because even in the transport sector for some of the rail projects being planned there are quite a number of them I think they are looking at EPC come financing yeah. so it's contract financing so if if a PPP a full page PPP is, is not feasible then I think oh um, commonly they will be looking at EPC with the contractors yeah. whether it's the Chinese or uh, exactly. bringing in their their financing to get these projects mm. and, and I think yeah. the big problem for Egypt yeah. as well and yeah. you, uh, you find this in some Gulf countries is mm -hmm. the need to shift uh, from away from a culture of wanting mm -hmm. to own a lot of infrastructure assets yeah. so the Egyptian government is often and has done so in the past and it's clear at the moment they fear letting go of the ownership of key mm -hmm. assets well, I, guess, I, I mean I guess there's two classic problems with the PPP 
or to, uh, let's call it barriers mm. rather than problems. Um, one is that transfer of ownership from the government to the to some private organisation, mm. which is about control and uh, all of that. Um, but the other key question is about value for money, mm. isn't it? So from a government point of view, it's going to cost me more over a longer period of time uh, it, with the PPP and then value for money for the investor. But what's, it will what's be, my return? it will be spread over a it will spread over a longer period of time, time and you get your yeah, capital exactly. investment off yeah, your balance sheet, the private exactly. sector brings it yeah, in yeah, with yeah. technology yeah, yeah. and skills. Yeah. So there are lots of you know discussion mm -hmm. points there yeah. and perfectly valid. But then there is the, the and this is probably most critical in Egypt, there is mm -hmm. that, um, is it commercial? Yeah. Is it a bankable project? You know, so yeah. with so many variables, you've just mentioned arbitration mm -hmm. clauses and things like that. But I think once once you you know you you get over the the, the question of whether it's bankable, what a, what a PPP project does is it guarantees the delivery of that project. Once mm -hmm. a bank and a developer puts yeah. their money down on the table, yeah. mm -hmm. these projects will go ahead. It's yeah, not like yeah. a government ministry where it can hold yeah, projects yeah, yeah, or yeah. shelf projects at mm -hmm. any stage. So I think this is what you know what PPP does is it allows regional governments, GCC governments mm -hmm. included, to guarantee these projects mm -hmm. actually going ahead at a time where populations, you mm -hmm. know, growth rates are increasing and there's a need for key infrastructure yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. projects.